Two hours later. Hello? Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay, fuck. Okay, here's what was happening. My mic is not working. They just decided to stop working in the, as soon as I started streaming, which sucks. Very upset about that. Uh, hopefully I can still record essays on this because I literally just bought this one. I think it's because it probably has something to do with my laptop. It's probably... I mean, my laptop's pretty fucked right now because I can't afford to repair it. So that's going to be something I'm going to have to like deal with. So right now I'm not using my mic. What I'm using right now is my webcam mic, which is a lot less good in terms of sound quality, but it's gonna have to do because uh, it seems like it doesn't want to work. So uh, gonna have to live with it. I'll answer this question, but really I was gonna say, well, first of all, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't know how many people are watching on YouTube right now, but um, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, please come over to fucking Twitch because um, like it's kind of hard for me to see the stuff that's on YouTube because like I have Restream, right? So I can technically see both, but I have one app specifically that displays my stuff for me really easily on one monitor because I only have one monitor and it's only for Twitch. So it's a lot harder for me to see stuff on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, come over to Twitch. Last thing. Uh, I'll answer this one question because you you were the first one But uh, if you want to answer me questions in the middle of the stream You're gonna have to either wait until the next time I do one of these celebratory sort of Q&A's Or you gotta send me a super chat of more than a dollar or bits of more than a dollar I say more than a dollar just because I don't want people I don't know if you can do this But in case you can I don't want people sort of like spamming fucking a billion fucking meme texts or meme messages and then like I have to deal with all of that so yeah your question was hey what's your favorite food that literally nobody else likes for me it's Cheetos slathered in Nutella and frozen overnight in a bag so they don't get freezer burn I gotta tell you like I don't think I have anything like that because uh, I have a really really sort of like particular appetite like all the food that I make is really really sort of like fancy and like like i tend to eat like asian food like butter chicken or or ramen or fucking shawarma or whatever these are things that people hey thanks for following these are things that people usually like like i can't eat anything that like most people find weird because chances are i would find it pretty awful too because I am a really really fucking picky eater. I think I'm like a super taster or something because I get like a gag reflex for stuff really easy so I gotta be eating something that like I, I can tolerate because I don't really like eating food to begin with but if I'm eating food I at least want it to be something that's at least moderately enjoyable. Next question. Hey have I tried a mirror? What's Emir? I don't know what that is. Arabic food? I have not, but I kind of want to try it. <laughs> I know a guy named Emir. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I have thoughts on psychedelics. Okay, so I used to sort of, well, not I used to, I still pretty much do psychedelics, just like not as much anymore. I used to do it like a ton, like a year or a couple of years ago. And uh, I, I usually do like 2CB, LSD, or shrooms or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, like, I remember that I found that 2CB, the first time I tried it, was like a particularly... It was definitely an experience in terms of... It's hard to explain. It's like, I realized a lot of things about, like, my environment and, and the universe, so to speak, that I didn't before. I realized that, like, feelings are kind of illusions. This distance between different objects is arbitrary, and categorization is arbitrary, and we're all matter and all of this hippie bullshit, right? When you're on it, like, you really feel that it's, it's not wrong to be sure it's a feeling that's only activated or mainly activated when you're on those psychedelics and it's definitely a sort of like if you've not tried it you really should you start to realize things that like you might understand sort of like on a theoretical level but you don't understand in terms of like your connection to the environment and the universe around you you don't tend to realize that on like the most visceral emotional level as you do when you've done like a psychedelic I think. So yeah, I'd recommend it. Okay, next question. Uh, what's my favorite dog breed? I don't know, I like like sled dogs. 
I like like the big sled dogs like Malamutes and like with the really cool like monochromatic skin. Like they seem really cool. Wait, hold on. I'm not supposed to be answering questions from the chat unless you send me a fucking thing. So no more. I keep think I'm fucking. I got the blinkers. I'm like this. I'm doing this shit. Watch. Yeah. All right. Somebody asked what social media am I on? I mean, like I I pretty much link all of my social media in the description of most if not all of my videos for just in case you don't know pretty much i got twitter which by the way i only got my questions from discord nobody fucking asked me any questions on twitter so please fucking follow me on twitter so that next time i do one of these things you, you can actually fucking like ask me a question instead of like i'm reading shit from like the discord to be fair i'll probably just do it with the community community tab next time anyway because like i don't have the community tab right now because I, I just got a lot of subscribers recently so I'm still waiting on that, but yeah. But yeah, if you do want to ask me that though, you can send bits or a super chat and I will answer it. It's my favorite Pokemon type. My favorite Pokemon type? I mean, I don't know, it used to be Dragon, but um, Fairy came along and it kind of sort of ruined all of that. So I don't know now. Probably like Steel. Like Steel, right? Like Steel is probably, even after like the nerfs, probably like the most versatile sort of typing, I think. I mean, I usually tend to have at least like one steel and one dragon in my in my party. Definitely they're very good for like defensive strategies or whatever. How tall am I? Uh, I'm five foot seven. Short boy. Uh, short king. What's the phrase? All men are kings, but it doesn't specifically relate to like the shortness thing. So whatever. Somebody asked, wanted to ask me what my political journey was like. Even though I said like it's really not that interesting, but like whatever. <laughs> I was born to like literal fucking boomer CNN, MSNBC, watching everyday fucking parents or whatever. Uh, so I grew up fucking literal lib. I got into politics from like a relatively early age, but I think like the first time I was ever really like consciously into and following sort of electoral politics on global scale was around the time when I was 12. That's around the same time I decided I wanted to be a libertarian for like six months and then I stopped because I was fucking stupid. The only reason I became a libertarian is because Gary Johnson was running against Obama and at the time I was really disappointed in Obama because I mean, what's there not to be disappointed about? But like, there are no like real progressive options that are like really famous. So like that was like the closest thing to like sort of gravitate towards. A bit after the election and after I came to sort of like understand my political views a lot better and I became a sock them. And then a couple of years ago, I became a socialist. I was in the anti-SJW community for a while, just because like I, w I used to be in the fucking new atheism community. And then that kind of eventually evolved into the anti-SJW community. Even at the time, I didn't like a lot of the people there. And then around 2015, I just completely left because uh, I recognized that like most of them were fast racists and shit like that. So I said, fuck it. And I was glad to see that some other people were doing that too. I did it pretty early on just because like me, I'm, I'm not really the kind of person to abide the fash. I mean, at any point in my life. So, I mean, like, why would I? They're a fucking horrific danger to me, but yeah. Well, I mean, like, first of all, I don't really think I was like indoctrinated to begin with. I was never really that into to it to begin with like i was in the community but i wasn't i need like i disagree with them a lot of the time i knew that i was to the left of most of these people to begin with i would hear out their opinions a lot of the time and stuff and i would be in the community sometimes until it became clear to me that the fash was taking over the community. In terms of like the stuff that I used to think I've not needed to de indoctrinate myself I guess because I unsubscribed from these anti-SGW channels just because I didn't like them anymore. I didn't find like most of their opinions very good or like well thought out. Like I, I feel like I pretty critically examined everything that they said. And I think that what I grab the reason I gravitated towards the anti SUW stuff was really just because of, I disliked the sort of caricature of the, of the fucking SJW that was so common to a lot of these videos. And I still pretty much do. It's just that I realized that even at the time I knew that it wasn't such a big deal, but now I really realize it's not such a big deal like at all. There are really not that many of these people who are just like a couple of abusive dickheads on the left, so what? But in terms of like what I thought, I was always fucking pro trans rights. I was always fucking pro gay rights. On social stuff, I never had any of these like bad views or whatever. I just didn't like the fucking 
like back then I liked like the free speech argument, I guess. Nowadays I'm a bit more skeptical of the free speech argument, but I was like, oh, they should be allowed to speak or whatever. As long as they're not like Nazis or whatever, and we can have a conversation. With the anti-SJW stuff, it was just more like, I didn't like that a lot of people were like censoring people, I guess, and they were acting kind of trying to shut shut down the ideas to, to fucking like allude to Dave, Dave Rubin. In terms of like what I thought, I mean, like I was always pretty progressive, so. And I get that, but like I know I have a little bit of fashion me purely going like fascist Discord server and checking out the shitpost area, and I went to that. That's not me. Like I, I never liked the shitpost stuff, and I always found, found that shit super toxic. I never liked it. Back when I was an anti SVW, I was definitely far more of an edge lord. Like I was a mega fucking edge lord when I was an anti SJW. Like, I didn't like other people doing it, but I was an edge lord just because like, I was already part of all of these like marginalized communities. So I would make like these jokes and like, it would be so ridiculous just because like it's coming from me. So like everyone knows that it's, that it's absurd. Like I would, there's no way I could think that. Nowadays, like I am not into the shit posting thing at all. I find this shit super toxic and yeah. I'm not into it. Me personally, I mean, like, I just don't think that there that there was like some sort of like indoctrination process where like I still have a bit of the fash in me. I don't think I ever had the fash to begin with. I was always pretty anti-fash. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. I don't really think I ever really had the fash. I like the people in the, at the time the anti SJWs were like maybe some conservatives, mostly like libs really. Those were the people that mainly comprised the anti-SJW community at the time. It's around the time that like Sargon came in, they kind of ushered in the, the fash uprising. <laughs>